Welcome back to season two of the Break the Twitch podcast on minimizing distractions and doing more of what matters through minimalism, habits, and creativity. I'm your host, Anthony Ungaro. As I mentioned, we are kicking off season two of the podcast with this episode, featuring a conversation with Matt Bray of the YouTube channel Project One Life. Matt is a filmmaker, a YouTuber, and a world traveler that has been sharing his experiences through his YouTube channel at Project One Life for several years. You may recognize Matt from his viral YouTube videos called 100 Days of Dance, 100 Places of Dance, and 100 People of Dance, all of which have millions and millions of views on YouTube. He's got another very exciting project releasing soon that he talks about in this episode as well. In addition to that, we talk about what it's like going viral on YouTube, how he fosters creativity, and the benefits he's found in doing comfort zone challenges. You're going to love this episode, so definitely stay tuned and check it out. And of course, this podcast is brought to you ad and sponsor free by the Break the Twitch member community. Community members get access to the full Break the Twitch library of audio courses and new audio courses every single month. In addition to that, there is a private online chat channel where we discuss minimalism, habits, creativity, and all things intentional living. In addition to that, New members get a 20-minute one-on-one call with me so I can show you around the place, show you the benefits, get to know you a bit, and get everything started. So to join and learn more about the Break the Twitch member community, just go to breakthetwitch.com slash community. But for now, let's start the show. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. And like, I'd like to point out the studio is incredible. And if anyone out there ever comes and visits, you'll be impressed. Thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> it's been a lot of work. We just finished these sound panels here and got these up. So it's a new addition for season two of the podcast. I love it. Very excited. Anthony was calling me earlier and I couldn't even hear him from the other room. So they, they work. <laughs> They're working just fine. Yeah. And Anthony told me not to look directly into the camera, but I keep doing that every once in a while. I might throw a few of those in this podcast. It might happen. <laughs> We'll see. So, Matt, it's kind of a funny thing that you're here because I like to kind of dig into the story a little bit of how I met the guest, if there's a bit of a story there. Yeah. I would love from your perspective, (laughs) several years ago, how you ended up at my house. That's a really interesting story because um, I was planning my first road trip by myself and basically it was like a month-long road trip. And I was going by myself, and I don't know anyone at any of the stops I was going to. So I was literally going on Reddit and asking people in the areas of stopping, like, hey, um, is there anyone here that would like to help me film or just help me out in any way, shape, or form? And I forgot what subreddit we were in. Do you remember what? It was the Minneapolis subreddit. So it was, was it? It was, a, <laughs> it was the local. <laughs> it was the local Minneapolis subreddit? Yep. Okay. And I, I, even, I don't even remember what I posted, but... I just remember you responded and you were like, hey, man, like I'm in Minneapolis. Um, would love to show you around, like give you a place to stay. You're like super nice. And I was like, oh, this guy seems really cool. So I messaged <laughs> you. And then weirdly, you're just like, yeah, like no problem whatsoever. Like you can come on over. And then during the road trip, like I stopped here. And like the first thing you said was like, I've never done this before. Yeah. Like you can't like when you messaged me, I was like, oh, this guy's got the experience. He knows what he's doing. But you're like, I've never done this ever, which is mind blowing. <laughs> What I think was interesting was at the time I had just started on YouTube because this yeah. would have been like 2015 ish, right? Yeah, it was after 100 Days of Dance, which was in 2014. So this was, it was actually right when I uploaded 100 Places of Dance. Mm-hmm. I just uploaded that and then I went on the road trip. Okay. So this was right then. So it's 2015, yeah. So we're going to dig into that stuff too. <laughs> but that's the hilarious way that, that we met. You ended up coming here. We ran around, did some filming. Mm-hmm. It's so weird that we met on Reddit, too. I always forget yeah. that. I'm like, Anthony's a good friend. Like We've been friends forever. <laughs> and also I'm like, oh, wait, we ran on Reddit. Like, yeah. what the hell? Who of all places. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's through the power of the internet. <laughs> There's a lot of good things that happen there, obviously. Yeah. Basically, you come hang out once a year mm-hmm. and shoot some stuff here and... Uh, there's a project going on right now that that's pretty exciting that mm-hmm. we'll have to dig into a bit too. 
tell me a little bit about YouTube because I know you've been doing YouTube for several years now. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was it that inspired you to upload your first video? So I always tell people this story because it's like the original Project One Life origin story. Mm -hmm. um, my friend Gene calls it the $10 popcorn story, and that's a great title for it. I was in going to college at DuPage, which is like this mediocre community college. Just I don't know what I was doing with my life. I was just taking general classes, um, working nonstop, just saving up money for I don't even know what. So I'd like $10,000 in my bank account, not doing any, literally just playing video games and going to school. And like, that's it. I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. I didn't know what I was doing. And so uh, me and my friend Jack went to the movies one night and we went to see Harold and Kumar 3. One of my favorite foods is popcorn. And so we're sitting at the uh, concessions and I was just like debating. I'm like, do I want to spend 10 bucks on a bucket of popcorn? Like, it's so much. But I love it so much. I want to get it so bad. And um, really like nonchalantly, Jack was just like, hey man, you only live once. Just kind of like joking off the cuff. And I specifically remember having that moment where like time stood still, like my brain exploded. And I was like, oh my shit. Like, I can't believe... You do only live once. I was like, what, what's going on right now? Like, I, I've just been wasting my time. I can't even decide if I want to buy $10 worth of popcorn. Like, what is going on? And so I, like, freaked out. And he's just kind of staring at me. And I felt like I was standing there for, like, a minute having this, like, crisis. I, like, I had a burst of energy. I, like, went to the counter. I was like, give me $10 popcorn. Give me a huge drink. Give me some candy. I'm like, what do you want? We're getting you something. So we, like, hooked up. Had an amazing movie experience. And then, like, we went home, played ping pong, like, talked about the movie. And I was just, like, still thinking about it. I couldn't get it off my brain. I was like, what? is going on like why why have I been living like this I have all this money saved up I'm not what if I died tomorrow like what if I got hit by a truck so that just inspired like me to create a bucket list I, I was inspired by um this show on MTV called Buried Life um, oh, yeah. which is a really old school show and they like had a bucket list and crossed stuff off because I was a big fan of that show I was like oh, I could start a bucket list that'd be awesome like do stuff I always wanted to do and so I made this huge list and um I planned this big road trip um with Jack and Mike Two of my other uh, friends, Jack, the guy that inspired the popcorn thing. And um, so we literally had this big, like, seven-day trip to New York, and I planned, like, stops and stuff and to do bucket list stuff along the way. Um, I went skydiving. We did, like, cliff jumping, um, paintballed in, like, Pennsylvania. I went to New York. Never been to New York before. And um, I never really filmed. I filmed a little bit before that, um, not too much. But that road trip really, like, opened my eyes to filming. I was like, wow, I actually really like filming and editing and putting little videos together. I was like, what if I just made a YouTube channel for this and put it up like on YouTube and like do bucket list stuff? And like, then it just kind of escalated from there and just it kept growing and changing. But it originally started from like that road trip and just filming and having fun and then just escalated to craziness from there. Interesting, yeah. And I do, I want to point this out too. Um, when I was confused and lost, like I started a bucket list. Um, and that's like my best advice to give to anyone who's confused or lost, like they don't know what they want to do. Like, just literally, you don't even have to make a huge list. Just write down like what you want to do, like anything, anything in the world. Like I want to go sky, I want to go cliff. I mean, just write down like five things that you've always wanted to do and just like do them. Just go out and do them. Just like write five things and just get them done. And then like all of a sudden that'll open your eyes to stuff that you didn't know existed. You're like, oh, I could be a skydiving instructor. I didn't even think about that job. That's a cool job. Like, like I didn't even think about that. At school growing up, there's all these jobs. You could be a police officer, you could be a firefighter. And you're like, I didn't even think about skydiving. So like it opens your eyes to different opportunities you wouldn't even think about. Why do you think creating a bucket list works? Or why do you think that's helpful? Um, just because it like takes you out of your comfort zone, which is a big one, and also opens your eyes to just different things that you didn't know existed. Like like I just mentioned, like the skydiving thing. I wouldn't even think of like a skydiving instructor. Like I don't want to be a skydiving instructor, but that's something you wouldn't really even think about doing. It's something you didn't even know existed, but that's an option. You could spend your whole life being a skydiving instructor. You could be a, a canoe tour guide, like canoe tour guide. You don't grow up and think, oh, I'm going to be a professional canoe tour guide in Nevada. Like that's something you don't think about. But if you go out and do it and you had it a blast and you're like, oh my God, that was the funnest thing I've ever done in my life. Like I want to do that. I want to be that guy that opens your eyes and changes your perspective on life. And you have, now you have a goal. Now you have like something you want to do. And it just completely reroutes your brain and gets you something like inspired. So I heard you mention comfort zone, getting out of your comfort zone, mm -hmm. which is this whole idea of like discomfort and exploring discomfort. Break the Twitch is all about exploring discomfort because mm -hmm. the Twitch, these little things we do are little ways we overcome that discomfort, but they're not productive. 
What does it mean to step outside of your comfort zone? What are some examples of, of things maybe you've done or um, what's I've, the importance of that? I've got a crazy list of things that <laughs> <laughs> I've stepped out of my comfort zone doing. Um, but I think like the one thing it does is it gives you like an insane amount of confidence. Um, like coming out of high school, I was like five two, like a hundred pounds, looked like a child. I always say I was a child among men in high school because I was. And so like I'm not the most confident guy in the world. And then um, obviously hit my growth spurt a little bit later. Now I'm six foot, which is a little bit taller. And so not the most confident guy in the world, but I had this goal where like I wanted to make videos and I come up with ideas. And basically it was like, I really wanted to see this idea through and it, and it asked me to step outside my comfort zone. Like if we wanted to film a prank video, I always bring this one up, like the Harry Potter prank video. Ever seen the movie Harry Potter, there's the platform nine and three quarters wall where they basically push their cart and they have to run through a wall and then they teleport to the new train station where they can go to Hogwarts. And so me and my friend went to an actual train station and dressed up like Harry Potter and just asked people, like, hey, is this the wall that get to platform nine and three quarters? And they're like, what? I'm like, oh, no, this is it. And then you just run full speed into the wall and crash. It didn't work and just, like, wipe out. And you're like, why'd you do this to me? <laughs> and, like, it, it's funny because it makes us look like idiots, but it's extremely outside your comfort zone. But, I mean, if you can do stuff like that, your confidence just, like, Goes sky high. You're like, I don't care what people think about me. Like, I look like an idiot. I'm letting millions of people online make me like they see me as an idiot. But like, I don't care. Like, it's funny. And it's it's cool. Stepping outside your comfort zone is just like the number one confidence builder. Like, that's immediately where I tell people like your confidence is just going to go through the roof after mm -hmm. you start stepping out of your comfort zone a little bit. This has been a big thing for me too, uh, especially with YouTube, especially with uh, early on vlogging mm -hmm. and holding, being the guy yeah. holding the camera <laughs> yeah. up like this yeah. and. And uh, I remember in one particular episode that I was shooting, uh, it was the first time I was kind of out and about holding the camera. And there was a woman out walking her dog mm -hmm. uh, in the opposite direction that I was walking. Mm -hmm. And I go, oh boy, here we go. <laughs> and I'm just, I'm just going to keep going. I'm just going to hold up the camera and I'm gonna keep going. I'm literally narrating my anxiety yeah. to the camera. And um, what happened was that she didn't look at me at all. She just walked past mm -hmm. and kept going and didn't look back. I checked to see if she was like, whoa, that was weird. Yeah. She wasn't. She couldn't have cared less. And that was all captured on film. Is this moment for me realizing that we can't let what we think other people are going to think of us uh, stop us from pursuing the things that really matter to us. And, exactly. and, and that's the a big challenge because there are all these societal norms where there are societal pressures to mm -hmm. be a certain way, to do certain things that are probably a good They're pressure. Good, yeah. But we also let that go too far is what I found in exactly, my own life. Exactly, yeah. I think taking, uh, pretty sure it was taking inspiration from you, I later did a video where I went to uh, Minnehaha Falls, which is this big national park uh, right by pretty yeah. close to our house. And I laid down on the ground <laughs> in public with and it was a busy saturday just sat there it was so uncomfortable i've always been so concerned about like what people yeah <laughs> would think like they're gonna think i'm crazy um and i laid there for about a minute mm -hmm. on the ground with people passing one guy literally stepped over me <laughs> without even didn't looking even, down didn't even bat an eye didn't even bat an eye and then eventually a really nice guy came over and just kind of kneeled down and was like Hey, are, are you okay? I just, I just want to make sure you're okay. Yeah. And I said, yes, thank you so much. And, and I went over and told him what I was doing and explained. And I was like, thank you so much for, you were the first person that, that actually yeah. cared and came over and was like, hey, is everything okay? So that was like a weird, genuine moment. But it also was this moment that I realized that none of these people mm -hmm. care. They're all too busy living their own lives. Yeah. And why should we let that hold us back? Um, and now maybe that's a silly example of comfort zone challenges because there are so many other ways that, that people push societal comfort zones. I, I think that's a perfect example because um, it's so weird and so different, but like it perfectly shows you, like you said, that people are just in their own worlds and they don't care. They're like, if I was walking in a park and I saw a dude laying on his back in the park and I saw he was okay, I'd be like, oh, okay, cool. Okay, I guess fine. <laughs> like, I don't care. Like, that's literally all people are going to think about. Like, every once in a while, you'll get like a cool dude like that walk up and be like, hey, man, are you feeling good? Are you okay? Mm -hmm. Like, that's pretty much all you're going to get. There's never going to be people like over in the corner being like, oh my God, you see that guy laying down? Oh, what a loser. Like that, yeah. it's like in the movies. And even if people did do that, I wouldn't like, what does it matter? You know? I recently had to, that reminded me, I recently had to think uh, for an exercise at a conference 
what would I want to tell my kids about the world if I had to just write them something mm -hmm. and not be able to be there for them in the future? Oh, okay, yeah. I don't have kids yet, so this was a completely imaginary exercise. Mm -hmm. So I, I sat down and, and started writing some notes about what I would want to tell my future children mm -hmm. about the world, about that. And that reminds me of what you just said about the people laughing on the side. Um, is that if there's anything I've learned about the world, about life, happiness, this stuff, it is that you should always be the person dancing and never the person on the sidelines making fun of the person dancing. Yeah. If you ever find yourself in that situation, change it, walk away from it, because mm -hmm. it's the person that's out there dancing, that's having a good time, that most people are actually like, man, I wish I could <laughs> just let go and yeah. have fun too. They may be dancing crazy, it might not be a good dance, <laughs> but they're dancing yeah. and, and that's how you live life. So some of your biggest videos on YouTube mm -hmm. have been your dancing videos. Specifically, the first one was 100 Days of Dance, yep. where you did the same dance routine <laughs> 100 days in a row mm -hmm. and filmed it. Yeah. The next one, 100 Places of Dance. Yep where you did the same dance routine, maybe a modified dance routine. It was a different dance routine, yep. yeah. But in a hundred different places, many around Chicago. Yeah, it's mainly Naperville and Chicago, yeah. Okay. And then the third in the trilogy, a hundred people of dance, mm -hmm. which I actually got to be in. Yeah. Which is pretty exciting. <laughs> I've had a few people uh, say, hey, did, is are that you? you? <laughs> are you in this video? Is that you? Like, yeah. No big deal. I've got some cool moves. <laughs> I mean, it was, you know, choreographed. No big deal. <laughs> Tell me about what went behind your first, was that a bucket list item to do a dance video? Or like, how did that come about? So that wasn't a bucket list item whatsoever. Um, that was early on in my YouTube career when I had like six subscribers um, and like 10 views. And uh, literally, no, I, my parents didn't know about my YouTube channel. I didn't tell my parents about my YouTube channel. I didn't tell my friends about my YouTube channel too much. Like, they, I would, they would notice me filming, but they never ask, like, oh, did you make a video or something? Like, I would just make a video, upload to YouTube, and wouldn't really tell them. And so I was literally, like, sitting in my room. I was like, I need, to, um, I need a video that kind of, I need something to explode. I need something big and unique and different, like a viral video. I was like, what's something that no one's done before? Like, what's something cool I could do? And I kept thinking about the um, one video where the guy took a picture of himself every day for a year. Yeah. And I was like, oh, what if I kind of do that? And I'm like, okay, that's kind of a cool idea, like picture every day for a year. I'm like, well, no one's really done like a video every day for a year. And I'm like, well, that's like a half an hour movie. I don't want to do that. That's too long. I was like, well, not a year, maybe like uh, 100 days. That's not too bad. I was like, what if I do a short clip for like 100 days? I'm like, well, what, I be, what can I be doing? I'm like, not really good at too much. And I'm like, I was like, what if I did a dance? Like, what if I just danced every day for 100 days? I'm like, that's kind of cool. I'm like, whoa, what if I did one routine and it like, I wonder how, I, like, I didn't know that would look cool. I was like, I'm going to go practice that. Like immediately I came up with that idea. I was like, I'm going to go film me just like doing a basic dance and I'll film it and change clothes, film it, change clothes, film it, see how it looks. I'll edit it. And I noticed it looked really, really cool. So you tested the idea first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. I like tested it and I noticed it looked really cool. I was like, oh, that looks awesome. So then I literally, um, what moved my cabinet in the center of my room and then duct taped a uh, GoPro so it wouldn't move. And I made sure it stayed glued there. And then I just made, I literally would like go up in my room for like a week and like make a routine. I would dance and like, I'm not a dancer or like a routine maker. So I was just like literally watching movies and shows and writing down moves I've seen in movies and shows. And then I would practice at my room. I remember like one night, my mom was like making dinner and I was upstairs trying not to like make a bunch of noise. I'm like, this is so awkward. This is so weird. I hope she doesn't come in right now. This is not cool. Um, and so eventually I had a routine and then I just started like filming every day. I would just, but like I would go to work, I would just hit it, spend a minute dancing in my room, stop the recording and then go to work. And I just do that every single morning. It just became a routine. Just do that every single day. And I actually did it for 120 days. It was like four months. But um, 100 days sounds way cooler than 121 days. And then I finished that video and I showed it to my friend Mike and he's like, dude, this is this could go viral. Like, this is really cool. I'm like, OK, like, it's cool, but it's not that cool. Like, I've been editing it for like three months. I think it looks crappy now because I've seen it so much. I was like, whatever. And then um, the day I remember the day I uploaded because it was super crazy. My brother was um, in a jujitsu tournament 
So I was home alone. My brother was at a jujitsu jiu- tournament with my parents. My parents were with my older brother, and um, he actually ended up winning the jujitsu tournament. Oh. And then um, I uploaded the video that morning, and then I posted it on Reddit, um, like in the afternoon sometime. And then I went downstairs, made some lunch, ate, watched some TV, and then went back upstairs. And I checked Reddit. I was like, oh, I wonder. Or no, I went to YouTube first, and I was like, I wonder how it's doing. And I noticed my subscribers went from like three hundred to like a thousand, and I was like. Okay, that's that's kind of cool. Maybe it's doing a little bit better than I thought. And then I noticed the views were at like a few thousand. I was like, "Whoa, what what's going on?" I went went to Reddit, and all of a sudden I was like, "Oh, no, okay, that's that's what's happening." It was like number one in videos on Reddit, and I was like, "This is crazy." And then my parents and my brother came home, and I ran downstairs. I was like, "Hey, how you guys doing?" <laughs> like, yeah, all nervous. They're like, "Good." Like, what's going? On? I was like, "I think something's happening. I don't know what, but I think something kind of crazy might be happening." Um, and I just, I told my parents about my YouTube channel like a week before that. So they're still like, I don't even know what this kid's doing. And then, um, like an hour later, all of a sudden it was like number one on Reddit, like literally number one on the front page of Reddit. And I texted my friend, Eric, I was like, dude, go to Reddit right now. I have a video. It's number one right And he literally is like, okay, sure. I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm like, please just go, go to Reddit now, please. It's like bagging him. And then he just texted back. Holy shit. <laughs> and I was like texting everyone. I was like, what is going on? And I started getting text messages from people like, is this you? Is this you? What's going on? And then um, literally we spent the whole night just reading comments and laughing and just like watching it go up, up, up. And it got up to like 200,000 views. And like, I was like, okay, that's good. I'm cool there. I'm totally fine with that. And we went out, got some dinner and then went home and it was like 300,000. I'm like, all right, cool. That's fine. And so we went to sleep, and I woke up the next morning, my dad, like, busting into the door, and he's like, get up now, you're on TV. I'm like, what? <laughs> what? And he's like, grandma called, she saw you on TV. <laughs> <Grandma called. laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, still, like, waking up, like, oh, what's going on? And he's like, you're on TV, get up. And then I, like, got up, went downstairs, checked, it was at, like, a million views. It was literally on the news. Um, subscribers were, like, at, like, 20,000 now. I'm like, I would start freaking out and panicking now. And I'm like, I don't know what to do. And And then you get like hundreds of emails and all these people are contacting you. And and it's just chaos for like a week. Wow. But my my favorite moment was um, the night it was going viral. Like me, my dad, and my mom were just like sitting around the TV watching TV. But like we were just refreshing our phones and refreshing the computer and reading new comments. And we were laughing so hard of like reading all these people's comments like why is this where a weird pee stain on the carpet and we're like (laughs) laughing so hard and it was just fun just like having that moment just like reading all these comments and stuff and Mm -hmm. but yeah it was pretty much pure chaos for a week or two because that video went like crazy viral one of the things that i experienced after i had one thing that did moderately well Mm -hmm. now i've never had a video get a million views or things like that but i've had certain posts things like that that will do a lot better than others. Mm -hmm. And then some of them will be complimentary in the sense of like, we will say, oh, this is the best thing you've ever written. Yeah. Uh, And in a lot of ways, that was the worst thing that could possibly (laughs) happen to me uh, for my my, uh, creativity. Mm -hmm. Because then I felt an immense amount of pressure to do something as good or better. And instead of just getting back to creating... I got stuck. Mm-hmm. And that's something that I, I think I've generally overcome now, just the pressure of just like, nope, you just show up, you, you create, and you move forward. Yeah. But like, did you feel that at all? And what was that like after having that first video blow up? And then you're like, now what? That's a really good question because I'm trying to go back and remember because I've gone through so many like hurdles and hills throughout the YouTube career. And I'm trying to remember like what my mindset was back then. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause I remember my first video after hundred days of dance was like a month later. And it was like a video of me smashing stuff with a sledgehammer. Like me and my friends grabbed a bunch of stuff from the trash and smashed a bunch of stuff in my driveway. Um, I still, I still like that video today. I think that was a good one, but um, I just remember, I thought that was like my big break. And I was like, Oh, I'm a YouTuber now. Like I did it. Like I made it and totally didn't, but um, it was a good like stepping stone. And I was like, okay, now you're, at least on the radar for some people. Um, I remember I watched um, Philip DeFranco. Um, I was watching one of his videos, and he actually mentioned my video, like in one of his videos. I'm like, that's it. I did it. Like, can't go. I, I peaked. Like, this is, this is it. Good yeah. game. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, like, I just wanted to keep doing my thing. Like, I was so in the zone of, like, crossing things off my bucket list. I really don't think I cared too much about... Um, 
topping the previous video. I just was like, I, I just want to keep having fun. I just want to keep filming because I enjoyed the process so much that I almost didn't really care if it was successful or not. I just wanted, I was hoping it was successful, but in the back of my head, I was like, I don't really care. I'm having fun. I just want to keep doing what I'm doing. And now um, people are watching, so it actually is kind of cool. Um, now you have somewhat of an audience. Uh, so now it makes it feel a little bit more uh, professional in a sense and not unless um, ghetto rigged is the word I like to use. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so I, I wouldn't say I felt too much pressure. I felt a little pressure, but for the most part, I was just kind of like in my zone, just still trying to keep on keeping on. Sure. I'd love to dig into some of the things around the themes of Break the Twitch that I see in your life, but mm -hmm. I'm curious what you think of them. The first one would be minimalism. And I know you're familiar with minimalism through yeah. at least through some of my channel and other things. Would you consider yourself to be a minimalist? You know what's funny is I didn't even know that word existed before yeah. I met you. I was like, what does that mean? And um, I was always naturally a minimalist without even knowing it. Um, and then once I started learning about it, I kind of got more interested in it. And I, in a way, tried to be more minimalistic, if that's a word. Um, but yeah, like I always just naturally was a minimalist. Like I didn't really have a bunch of stuff. I'm always the guy that kind of gravitates towards experiences and moments more than I am objects. So like if I get, if I won like $2 million in the lottery, like I would usually probably like give a bunch to my parents, give a bunch to charity and then just like have a bunch of experiences and like maybe buy a cool like solo wheel or something. <laughs> so <laughs> like a nicer solo wheel. <laughs> a nicer solo yeah, wheel. Yeah. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy a cool car. I wouldn't go and buy a bunch of new shoes and yeah. like I, that just doesn't appeal to me. For, for those listening and viewing, what what the heck is a solo wheel? <laughs> That's a very good question. It basically, it's like a, a hoverboard, but it's basically a, a unicycle is a better way to explain it. It's like one single wheel with two pegs on the side of the wheel, and it's electric, and you like use your body movement to control it, and it's extremely hard to ride, but extremely fun once you figure it out and spend like two weeks learning how to ride it um, and falling a bunch. But after you fall and get the hang of it, then it's a blast. But it's basically an electric unicycle. So tell me about the habits that you employ for the things that you do. Is there a morning routine in particular that you follow? Is there a work routine? How do you stay focused on what you need to do? That is a really good question. I like The only time I really think I ever have a routine routine is if I'm working out. Um, like if I'm running or trying to lift weights, then I'll literally be like, all right, you have to wake up here, you have to eat here, you have to work out here, and then I'll just stick to it. Um, but when it comes to my videos, I love editing so much that I'll spend hours and hours doing that. And I always have um, an actual list on my phone of like things I need to do for like the day or the week or just priorities. And usually every single day, I'll just wake up, look at my list, and just start tackling objects. Like, I don't really have a, an agenda of, like, or a routine, like a consistent routine. Usually every day is a little different. Um, but I usually make a big list. I'll wake up, start working, have a bowl of cereal, keep working. But um, you literally, you literally I just, like, stick to my list. I think that's the best way to put it is I have a list, and I stick to the list and just always add to the list and do stuff off the list. What are your favorite cereals? Ooh. Um... I used to love Honey Nut Cheerios with a passion, but I ate them every single day before I ran a marathon, and now I hate them. Like, I can't eat them anymore. But I love, like, Cocoa Puffs, Cinnamon Toast Crunch, the classic. All those weird, fruity, like, nine-year-old cereals are, like, my go-to. I used to eat cereal every <laughs> single day of my life, pretty much from the time I was able to make my own choices around breakfast foods, yeah. uh, probably starting at, I don't know, elementary school at some point or, you know, mm -hmm. fifth grade, maybe middle school through college. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I ate cereal every <laughs> single morning. I, I do that. I eat cereal pretty much every morning. I was actually going to make a cereal video and I still might, but that's, that's for future videos. Yep. <laughs> I, uh, I, I stopped, uh, probably in the last, I don't know, five to eight years mm -hmm. uh, eating cereal at all. And now I don't eat cereal at all. Oh, wow. I, I know. Massive shift. And I just found that the basically it's a ton of sugar. Yeah. And <laughs> That's what I live off of. It's a ton of sugar, and I don't respond super well to sugar. And so I'm, I'm eating a lot of, like, salads and protein and random stuff. 
made protein that's, pancakes this yeah. morning, that kind of stuff. They were yeah. very good. I'm, I'm glad you liked that. <laughs> that's good. That's what you should do. You, you have a proper adult uh, diet, which is good. I don't. I, my days. body is not accustomed to the normal person, I guess. I, I survive off of sugar, cocoa puffs, pop tarts. Like it, people will be blown away by the things that you like. My roommates are just like, dude, you gotta start cooking or something. <laughs> gotta fry something up. Yeah, he's like, just you gotta do something. Get some greens in there. <laughs> what does creativity mean to you? And do you feel creative? I try my best to be as unique as possible and also try and not redo the same thing. I'll use my dance videos as an example. Like when I had 100 Days of Dance, um, I was like, oh, it's a really cool video. It's fun to do. I want to make a sequel since that was um, pretty popular. I'll make a sequel. I feel like a lot of people in my position would have just done 100 Days of Dance 2 and just did a different routine with a different song in their room. I was like, I already did that. I need to do something different. I need to like up it. And so I did 100 Places instead of, I was like, I wonder if that would even look cool. Like if I changed locations, that one I didn't test out. I just started filming and hoped it worked. And we actually filmed that video in a week. We filmed every day for like five days and I edited for two days and that was done in a week. Wow. Um, and so I wanted to one up that. So I did something different. And then after 100 places of dance, I was like, well, how can I one up that one? I was like, well, I can bring people in, on board. That'd be kind of cool. Like instead of just me dancing, it's other people dancing with me. That's a way to one up it. So I kind of one up that. And um, even with my other videos that I post on my channel, like I try not to use, I never use the same song. I never use like a, in the sense like you, <laughs> it drives me crazy because sometimes I'm like, I have no more ideas. Like I can't think of anything more. Um, but I try my best to be as different as possible um, for my previous work as well as be different from other people's work and try and find my own voice and try and find my own unique style. And that takes, literally it took like six years for me to find my own style. But now I actually feel like I finally have my own unique style. And it's, it's not super unique, but it's a little bit different. And you can kind of tell when you watch at least one of my videos, you go, okay, this is different. Like, I don't usually get this from the average YouTuber. What does it take to to get there? Because this is something that I've questioned as well. I don't know that I have my own unique style. I have ways, looks that I like, mm -hmm. but I don't know that they're exclusive to me or I could even consider it my style. Yeah. So how do you know when you've gotten there and what does it take to get there to where you really start feeling that? Um, I've seen a bunch of your videos. I do feel like you have your own unique style, but um, the, the moment I realized I... Um, reached my, I guess, uniqueness was when I actually started enjoying my videos. Um, and I actually was like, oh, I actually like watching that video. Like, that's a good one. Like, that happened way later. Like, I can't watch my older videos. I cannot watch. They're unbearable. They're terrible. But that's usually for most people anyways. But um, I've actually gotten to the point now where I'm like, oh, I actually enjoy that video. I won't say that when I'm uploading and done ed editing because, like, I've watched it a million times. Now I hate it. But after like a month or so, I go back. I'm like, oh, that was awesome. Like I see old moments and old memories and stuff. Um, so for me, it was like the moment when I was watching some of my old videos and going, oh, I actually kind of like that. And I don't see that on other YouTubers' channels. I made this video called like Create a Game like really early on in my career. And I used like basically the exact same like song that Devin Superchem used, like same shot. I tried to get like same shots. Um, and it just like, it looked like a, awful edit uh, awful attempt at like a Devin super tramp video Your bootleg. Um, yeah <laughs> it was like horrendous so like you, you have to go through that though you have to go through like your inspirations because that's what you want to do you want to be your inspiration so you make videos similar to them and um you keep working and changing your stuff a little bit here and there you go oh, i don't want to be so much like him I'll, let me try this a little bit and change it up and then you finally get to the point where you're like oh that's actually kind of different i don't remember seeing someone do that and then and it just kind of keeps folding and then after years and years of work eventually you get to the point where you're like okay i, I think i kind of think i'm there i think i finally reached it mm -hmm. tell me about the uh the penny story because this is one that that is fascinating for me and it became a video yeah but it just a lot of the timelines for the videos we do here on Break the Twitch are like, well, the podcast, right? It's a recording session. It takes about a week to yeah. like edit, get through, do the intros, outros, get stuff going. Mm -hmm. so it's about a week timeline. Uh, a lot of your videos take a lot longer than that. Yeah. So specifically <laughs> this, penny, this penny one. Yeah. 
If you wouldn't mind providing some context for how that started and what it what it was. I, I'm trying to remember where I got the idea for it. I think I'm almost positive. I was watching an episode of Modern Family and um, they did something similar where they like found a bunch of pennies that were heads up and they wanted to buy a lottery ticket or something, something like that. So basically what I did was for a year and a half, I would, well, it took me a year and a half to do, but I set a date and I just found one penny on the ground. And then I was, I took a picture where I was standing with the penny. And then I said, I'm going to do this 99 more times until I have a hundred pennies. So whenever I'm out with friends or I'm ever walking and I see a penny on the ground, I'll pick it up, take a picture where I'm at, and then add it to the collection. And then once I have a hundred pennies, I will go and buy a $1 lottery ticket. And hopefully the luck of finding all those pennies will give me a winning ticket. <laughs> so did it. What did it give you the luck of winning a ticket? So you, you yeah. collected, <laughs> you collected these things for a year and a half. Yeah, in the name of making a video of doing this thing, mm -hmm. and what ended up happening? Um, well, then I dressed up in Lucky Charms too. Like I had a lucky bracelet and like a lucky belt because I was like, well, if I'm gonna go with the luck angle, might as well go all in with it. So I decked out in luck gear, and we went to the gas station, bought a $1 ticket with a hundred pennies and the dude didn't care. Like I was dressed up like a leprechaun and he was like, I, I don't care. Like, he not even, even the in, he didn't <laughs> even ask us any questions. Like not even the craziest thing I've no. seen today. No. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. Like I, I, we, I, I was like counting the pennies for him. He's like, I don't just give me the pennies. Like, <laughs> you, know, you don't have to count them. You're good. Oh, and man. so he just took the pennies like, all right, here you go. And he's like, all right. Okay. And then we left, went home, scratched it. And I, assumed I was going to lose. So I had a backup plan like to make, because you can't just like have that whole video, like this building anticipation. It's like, oh, lost. You know, I had to have something like at least funny at the end. So um, I ended up losing, but um, me and my friend Mike like have, like we pretend that I won. And then my, me and my friend have this like big fight over the ticket and I break a fake bottle on his head. Um, and then it turns out like I was just, imagining that and then we scratch the real ticket and then i lose and it's it very abrupt and i think i think it was a funny way to end the video but it's it's better than just like losing and be like oh at least we tried you know some different funny way to end it but yeah we we lost that's okay <laughs> it's really about the journey yeah. uh they say you know rather than the destination it was cool because we i had a hundred pictures over the year and a half and so like it was random moments i like forgot about where i'm like oh yeah i remember going grocery shopping with my grandma and i took a picture of my grandma or, like we found a bunch in vegas i was like oh yeah we were like we were in the, with that crazy cab driver like i found one in his car and um you like go back and you see all these little moments you're like oh shit i forgot about that so it was a cool collection to have those yeah. even though we lost a little upset <laughs> still so bothered i can tell there's still some anger or uh, some disappointment because i i like if if we won, like we actually won, I had all that evidence. Like you won like ten thousand dollars. It's like, oh, I have another vial ready on the bank. That's that's perfect. But that's okay. That's okay. So, what would you say is important to you? Friends, family, and happiness. That's another big one. I always put like happiness first, and I go like, what would make me the most happiest, and what would make other people the most happiest. And so I always just that's like my life. I just that's number priority numero uno. Um, and it's been working out for me very well. So I just stick with that. Mm -hmm. And I love my family and friends. You know, what's funny as well. Um, my, my friends are pretty much all from when I was like five. Like, I don't remember, I don't, other than you and like maybe like two other people, I don't have too many friends, like good friends where I met them like in college or after high school or I was like, all my friends are like from when I was like five or six. Like I just stuck with them. I was like, I was like, oh, we're friends now. This Ride is, or die. Yes, yeah. this, is, this is gonna be a long one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I wouldn't say that's a bad thing. You know, you uh, have long term friends, and those are the things I've noticed too. As I get into my thirties and into my mid mid thirties, mm -hmm. uh, people kind of are more tied into their family units. They're more tied into uh, their partnerships, depending on you know married or not or whatever. Yeah. And it it's uh, it seems like it is harder to build those types of friendships. It so yeah. got to hold on to the ones you got. Exactly. Yeah. What advice would you give to someone who wants to start doing something like YouTube or music or whatever? Like what would be your just kind of stepping stones for them that you would offer as, as advice for getting started? Um, 
basically the first advice that came to my head when you asked that question is just start making stuff immediately as make make as much as you can like look at other people's stuff find out what you like and just keep making it and understand that all your videos are going to suck for, for like three or four years and you just have to accept that but in the back of your head just try and get better like just try and top the previous one that's my motto just always try and top the previous one because you're going to make a video and you go oh the audio is crappy there mm -hmm. like, all right I, now i know how to fix it it's just failing and learning failing and learning and that's all you do for a while and the more i mean the more videos i take like forever to make my videos so i mean some people will probably go through the process a lot quicker if they're making videos like every day or every week i mean within like six months they're like oh i can know i know how to make a video now i can know how to make an actual video the audio is good videos in focus lighting's mm -hmm. good um so just literally make videos and then rewatch them and look at them and go what i do wrong okay that's that's wrong then just fix it and then do it again the rewatching is often painful, mm -hmm. but it should be, is what yeah. I found, right? I didn't start figuring out a lot of this stuff until I was 70 videos in, like <laughs> quite a few videos in. Yeah. And for me, I still have a long way to go because I look at other creators on YouTube who uh, have been filmmakers for 10 years or other people that, that have been doing this for a long time, and I see it and I'm just like, man, that's so clean. And, and I, I look at it and I realize that I still have so far to go with this. But I will say that compared to the first video I ever made, in terms of lighting, sound, things like that, I'm really focused on that. And, and mm -hmm. it's, it, it's rung true, it is just try to make it better than the last one. Mm -hmm. Just run your own race yeah. and do it. So yeah, that's good advice. The other advice too is don't ever, um, what's the best way to put this? Like don't ever be jealous or be jealous of like other people's accomplishments for what their age is like there's 19 year olds that are like billionaires now um like and you go oh i'm i'm 25 i don't i don't even have a thousand dollars to my name it's like, don't even think it like just focus on yourself focus on your world and you you like don't even bat an eye at those people and then before you know it all of a sudden you're like oh i'm actually doing pretty good like i grew a bunch like this year i'm doing really well and i was like oh i didn't even think about those people those people are way above me but if you don't think about them you don't even worry about them that's the best advice I could give. Don't like I've done that before where you're like, oh man, those people are exploding. My channel sucks. I'm like, <laughs> oh man. It just it it does nothing except bring you down. Yeah, it's uh it's tough. Yeah. And walking the line between comparison for artistic growth and comparison for making yourself feel terrible <laughs> is a very thin line. Yeah. Uh, because you can seek inspiration from the greats. You can seek inspiration from those that have been doing things longer than you for whatever reason. But uh, if it starts to make you feel bad, you got to just unsubscribe. Mm -hmm. uh, you got to just back out of it. <laughs> yeah. You got to just back Find, out. Yeah. <laughs> I love just that. back out. Back out. <laughs> uh, because really it's about doing what it takes for you to make your thing. Yeah. Right? And, uh, and sometimes it's harder than, than not. So Matt, tell me about what you're working on right now, what you have coming up. If we backtrack to the lottery video, that was the last video I made, which was um, early 2018. Um, and that was the last video I made because I literally took a break from YouTube. I wanted to, literally in the back of my mind, this is another good point too, is um, always do something that you want to do. So at the time, I didn't want to do YouTube. I wanted to live a normal life. I wanted to get a normal job. I wanted to go on dates. I wanted to hang out with friends on the weekend. I wanted to just live a normal life and see what it was like because I really haven't done that before. And so I was like, I want to do that. So I'm going to do that. So I stopped doing YouTube. I focused on doing that. Did that for a handful of months. Enjoyed it. It was a good experience. Not for me. Not my style. Realized that. But I'm super glad I did it because I realized a bunch of stuff. And so I got this new inspiration for YouTube, kind of like rewired my brain. I can't even remember what it was, but something clicked in my brain. Mm. And um, basically what I'm doing now is I'm just filming all my videos at once, editing them all together, and then releasing it like a TV series. So like um, January 2019, I'll have eight episodes. Um, and that'll be season one of Project One Life. And then once that's done, I'll start season two. I've already got like ideas for season two, so I'll start working on that. And that was a big turning point for me for some reason was just filming it and editing like that instead of having to worry about 
meeting a deadline, having to worry about meeting, oh, I got to finish it this week. I have to come up with something by the end of the month or else I'm screwed. I can't, that just forces creativity and I don't like being forced. I like to have natural creativity. And so this makes it so much easier to just have ideas, go out, knock them out, take your time with them, make sure they're done properly. If they don't, if something goes wrong, you can fix it, make sure it's done into your standards. And then once it's all good, upload them all together. And I'm, I'm super excited. Like this is the most excited I've ever been for videos I've made um, because they're done. Like I enjoy them. They're done the way I wanted them to be made. I didn't have to upload it and like, Oh, I forgot to do that. Or like, Oh, I had didn't have, I didn't have enough time for that. It's like, take your time with it, make sure it's perfect. And then work on that. But for the past year and a half, I kind of quit YouTube, but there was one video I still wanted to make. And that was, thousand people a dance which is the new dance video i'm working on which is the fourth dance video and um instead of a hundred people now it's a thousand people and instead of a hundred pe hundred people a dance was all around america and canada um but this one's all around the world and so for the past year and a half i've just been traveling around the world and dancing with as many people as i can possibly get to dance with me i had some savings so i spent all my savings and then i launched a gofundme and that raised a few thousand, so I spent all that. And then I worked all summer, and then I saved up a bunch of money, and I spent all that. And so I spent all my money twice to make this video happen. I'm still filming it now, but I'm almost done. Um, but it's been a long, long process. But it's by far, I think it's by far like the best work I've ever done out of any video I've ever made. Um, and that's literally like all I go for. But as long as I enjoy the video, I'm good. Like, I don't really care if people don't like it. It's, I love it, so I'm, I'm pumped for it. You will have been glad to m have made it. Yeah. Even if it doesn't blow up. Don't care. Yeah. Right. Don't care. Yeah. Um, and it's awesome, too, because, like, with this video, since I've been filming it for so long, each clip of me dancing in different locations is, like, a different moment in my life. So I can go back and see, like, oh, my God, like, I forgot what, I for totally forgot, like, what my mindset was then. And, oh, I forgot about those people. I was dancing with those guys. They were the nicest people in the world. Oh, my God, my trip to Chile. I forgot about my trip to Chile. It was insane. Um, I've been, like, I've been to so many places. It's Now my brain's, like, starting to melt just because I can't even think straight. I feel like it's hit had a, a toll on my memory because I can't even remember a bunch of stuff that's happened but so the, it's a good uh video because it reminds me of the things that's happened yeah it's one of the nice things about video exactly is, is the the snapshot mm -hmm. of the memory um one place where minimalism does not really apply is that we keep all of our footage so uh all of this original footage from these interviews we store all of it and it means we buy a, a lot of hard drives and things mm -hmm. like that but um all of the vlogs, all of the different things. It's so awesome to be able to flip back to a certain time in your life. Yeah. And uh, because it's all digital, it's compact. It's not like we're, you know, having boxes and boxes of tapes in your closet. Like, right. which one is it? <laughs> right. It's a lot better these days. Yeah. And, and I just love that. It's just one of those aspects. It's like a memory book, but, um, but video, and you can actually transport back there. That's one of the magical things about it. That's so. awesome. That's cool. So you uh, have this new project coming out. Do you know how many countries you've been to over the last year trying to do this video? Um, on my budget, I think I've done a pretty good job of traveling to as many countries as possible. And I think it's at about 15 total, mm -hmm. um, which is decent because I film a bunch in each country. Um, I think it's around 15, maybe 16, 14, 15, 16. I think my favorite places I've gone to were um, Japan, Amsterdam and uh, Peru. I went in Peru and saw Machu Picchu. Nice. Um, and Peru was like the first time I felt like fish out of water because I got there and it's like you feel like you time traveled 50 years back <laughs> and like not a lot of people speak English there. Like I went to the hotel and the person's like, hello. I'm like, hi, do you speak English? Like, no, nah, <laughs> not even a little. I'm like, okay, um, I'm Matt. I stay here one night. She's like, I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> oh, wow. I was like, um, one night. And she goes, you stay here? And I go, yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. <laughs> I was like, stay here one night. And she pulled my name up. She's like, gave me the thumbs up. I'm like, there we go. Got that out of the way. Um, and I forgot. Oh, my God. I forgot about this. I don't think I told you about this. But when I was in um, Peru, flew back from Peru, um, I got stuck at the airport for like 36 hours. And like, I didn't have my phone. I didn't have any electronics or any music or any entertainment. Basically, what happened was I had to, the hotel had to check out at like nine in the morning, which is absurd. And so I didn't have 
any plans for the whole day. My flight was at like five and um, I was already super tired. And I'm like, you know what? I don't want to waste any more money doing something. I'm just going to go to the airport, just suck it up. Just say, this is going to be a waste of a day, but I just want to go home now. I'm just going to accept it. Like I'm just going to have a long day at the airport. I'm okay with that. So I went to the airport, sat there, waited till five, flight gets delayed, totally fine. And then eventually um, we got on the plane and I was in Cusco. So I had to go from Cusco to Lima, Peru. And so flight took off at like six, gets to Lima, Peru at like seven. So now I'm at the airport at seven and then my flight leaves at midnight. And so I was like, okay, just have to go get some food, chillax for a little bit and then I'm heading home. And then like right when I got to the airport, the flight got delayed to like six in the morning. And um, I was like, oh, that, that's not cool. I was like, well, it's 12. Like, I'm super exhausted. Like, I'm so tired. I can't even stay awake right now. And it got delayed an extra six hours. So I was sitting at the airport, and, like, my iPod died. Like, it was already dead. So I was like, all right, I don't have music. My phone had, like, 5% battery. I'm like, well, I got to save that, like, in case of an emergency. So I turned that off. My Kindle was dead. And, like, that's all I had. And, like, I had a, a Nintendo that died. I had no entertainment. And I had to kill six hours. Um, and it was basically like 10 at that time because I, I got there at like seven. And so it was 10 p.m. and I had to kill was it eight hours, eight till six. Mm-hmm. And I had no electronics, no music. So, and that airport is tiny. There's nothing to do there. Like, there's no, you can't go outside. It's like pitch black. Um, you're in the middle of nowhere. There's no, like, there's like two food stands. There's like Subway and like Papa John's. And so for something fun, I would just, every like two hours, I would take a Papa John's break and I would just go get one slice of pizza at Papa John's just for entertainment purposes, <laughs> um, not because I was hungry. And so I literally spent eight hours walking in circles, just thinking for eight hours. And like, it was the weirdest moment of my life because I was so gone. I was like a zombie. And like, I remember having a moment where I was like, I should just become a DJ. Like I should just... <laughs> quit life, become a professional DJ. And I started like for an hour was thinking like my name, like what music I would do, what venues I would go to. And like, I had this whole like world about being a DJ for like an hour. And that was like two in the morning. But the thing was I couldn't go to sleep because I didn't have an alarm to wake me up. So if I slept through, I would miss my flight. So I was like, I can't really, I was so tired. I was like, I'm going to sleep. And if I go out, I'm going to be out for a while. Like I can't risk that so I would just like slowly begin become more and more sleep deprived and just crazier and crazier and they're just walked in circle the airport was so tiny I would walk in a circle I walked pretty much everywhere in like four minutes five minutes and so people were like sleeping because they could wake up and have alarms and stuff so they're just they're, people were just watching me just walk in a circle in my backpack and just staring and I just did that for like eight hours and I don't I don't remember much. I don't remember how I did it, but I did it. And then the second I got on the plane, I passed out and woke up on landing. Do you, uh, have you ever meditated or do you meditate at all? I would say I tried one time in my room, like sitting down and I was like, that was kind of cool. Like I was relaxed, breathed properly and everything, but, um, I don't really meditate, but I, ever since school growing up, I've hated school my entire life with a passion. I've always hated school. And so I'd always zone out and I've just gotten so good at zoning out that like it's entertainment for me. Mm-hmm. And so now I just like can zone out. And I, in, a, in a way, it's like meditating. Um, it's like a form of meditation. So what I do is meditate like 10 times a day. <laughs> I zone out a bunch. So you're actually meditating all the time. Yeah. And uh, it's funny too, because I remember when I was at College of DuPage and I came up with the Project One Life idea, um, I literally was like the worst student of all time. I took classes with my brother and my brother was like, dude, what are you doing? Um, I would literally have a notebook and I would write notes for videos. I would spend all day, instead of listening to the teacher, just writing notes for video ideas. And um, like I would get, somehow I would get C's. And I had a D. I've never gotten a D in my life. I don't know how. And I did get a D. I had a 67% in the class and the teacher rounded it up to a a C minus. I was like, that was the nicest thing. (laughs) And she shouldn't have because every single day I slept in class. I like, pa- and it wasn't on purpose. I would just pass out from boredom. I would literally close my eyes and, I, and I'd like, just, my brother would wake me up like 20 minutes later, like, dude, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, sorry. You could say that school is not your thing. No, I hated it. Uh, what advice might you offer to, to people that feel that way? You know, that, um, that are the, feeling like it's just not their thing, that it's don't, not the right move. I, I honestly don't think people should go to college um, right away at all. I think gap years 
should be more popular in America. They're extremely popular in Europe mm -hmm. um, and other countries, but they're not even talked about in America, which is ridiculous. Um, because coming out of high school, like I feel like my brain wasn't even fully developed. Like you can't ask me what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. Yeah. And college is so absurdly expensive. Like it's a joke now. People go there, spend all this money. Now they're in debt, and now they don't even like what they're doing. It's like now you're stuck. Like mm -hmm. I didn't go to college. I spent zero dollars on college. Um, and this goes back to like, I put happiness first. So I didn't like school. I was like, I don't care. I don't want to go to school. I'm not going to go to school. Um, I remember my dad <laughs> gave me the talk because I told him I was like, I want to stop going to school. I want to do YouTube videos. And he goes, all right, we need to talk. <laughs> oh, <laughs> He's, like, <no. laughs> He's like, yeah, I really think you should finish up and get at least your um, associate's degree. And I was like, no, I don't want to do that. And then like, um, then he was really convincing. He's like, you really, really should. And I was like, yeah, maybe I should. And then, like, I remember I was in the car with my friend, and I was telling him about it. And he's like, wait, you're going to go back to school? And I was like, wait. I was like, no, I don't want to go back to school. And then uh, that was the moment I realized my parents aren't always right. And it took me way too late in my career, or may, way too late in my life to realize my parents weren't always right. Because literally up until, like, 20, I was like, my, my dad's right. Like, my dad's always right on everything. And then at that moment, I was like, oh, my God, he's not right here. Like, he's not right. Like, this is... And so I... Um, just like didn't sign up for school. He's and then he came in. He's like, so you're not going to school? I'm like, nope, I'm not going. He's like, all right. And then three months later, Hundred Days of Dance came out, and then he was like, oh, okay. So you got something here. Yeah. He's like, okay, you're doing something. Um, basically, I would say don't go to college if you don't know what you want to do. Only go to college if you're like, I really like, really, really want to do this. I know I want to do this. Don't go to college if you think you want to do it just mm -hmm. do it take classes before you go there and see if you like it figure out what you like before you go to college college should be a place where you go to up your career and the thing that you really want to do it shouldn't be there to figure out what you want to do at least i don't think now mm -hmm. back in the day that's what it was yeah but at least now it's not worth the money to do that you shouldn't go to college to figure out what you want to do it's too expensive mm -hmm. back in the day hell yeah you should go to college and figure out what you want to do and have experiences and stuff but now it's like it's not worth yeah. it it's uh i have some opinions around this too mm -hmm. and uh, i i really believe that similarly uh, as well that College is, it has become a thing that is insanely expensive and can be, in terms of the, the medium wage earner, the median wage earner has not kept up with uh, the cost of getting a de degree. Mm -hmm. And so it just doesn't make sense to spend eighty or $100,000 and start life as a 22-year-old with $100,000 of debt, which is almost a mortgage in, in a lot of places, yeah. uh, that you could be owning a home and building equity in a house. Uh, which isn't always the right answer either. <laughs> but, uh, you know, if especially if you don't know what you want to do, you don't have like a goal in mind, it's job training. I mean, that's what college was set up to do, to mm -hmm. prepare people to enter the workforce. And uh, it's an investment. So if you think of it, start thinking of it that way, uh, yes, a lot of corporate jobs, most corporate jobs have that checkbox where it says you need any almost any college degree. You just need a degree to do it. Yeah. But again, that, you know, is that the best option? Is that the direction you want to go? Uh, I don't know. It, it, I think the gap here makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I think we need to look at it more as job training uh, because I know a lot of younger people as well are also not, they're going, spending tons of money to be there and not even taking it seriously. Yeah. Um, and there's an argument, Gary Vee always talks about this, about like, go, have a blast, like enjoy college. Just don't worry about it. And then figure it out later. You know, in, mm -hmm. in your 30s, he's all about like, oh, in your 30s, you can hustle, you can grind, you know, do a startup, whatever. <laughs> so there's obviously varying opinions about this, but but at this point, it just seems like it does. It, if you don't have a specific outcome in mind, uh, there is a lot of growth opportunity. But maybe wait, maybe wait a year or two. Yeah. Who knows? There's a bowl over there, and we have questions from previous guests. Oh, there's a bunch in here. Yep, in this bowl. Uh, so what you're going to do is pull one out. Do I get to write one? And you will get to write one at the end of the episode. And yep. can it be anything? It can be anything you want. You have to put your name on it, though. So you will Ooh. have to assume, <laughs> assume credit. But uh, go ahead and pull one out, and uh, let's do it. Um, YouTube viewer, Angela K. Oh, nice. Angela. Yeah, so uh, I see Angela. She comments on a lot of the videos. She's really wonderful. And so that's a, that is a question from Angela. What is the one thing you feel was most influential to your success? 
Um, growing up, my dad was very, very strict. Like he taught me discipline. Um, and I love my dad. I get along with my dad now. It's, it was funny, um, to have that, like growing up, he was my dad and now he's like kind of my friend. And it was just that weird crossover stage where it's like, are you going to yell at me or <laughs> like, where are we, yeah, where are we here? <laughs> transition? But, yeah. um, growing up, like he was like, he taught me like, like right and wrong work ethic. Um, all that, all that important jazz. And so like growing up, like I noticed a lot of people are like really lazy and like weren't doing stuff. I'm like, Oh, you, what's going on? Like, why aren't you doing that? Just do it now. Like just get it done with. Um, so he taught me like work ethic, super hardcore. So that was a big, big, uh, big thing to help me with my success. Cause I'm, if I'm not uploading a bunch, it's I'm working regardless, um, on something. I'm always working on something and I'm always every day I wake up and I'm, ready to work. That's like my favorite thing to do is just have something going and just keep working. What was least influential? I would say school. Mm -hmm. That's a good, decent answer, right? <laughs> What's interesting to me about your answer is, is that you work hard. Uh, it's just, but school wasn't the right place for you to work hard. Yeah. I just didn't like the idea of like sitting in a room, listening to someone talk and like taking that. It's just so boring for me. Like I can't, like thinking back about it, like gets me like nervous. I'm like, I can't, I've had nightmares where I'm just like, I hate it so much. I wanted to get a big poster in my bedroom that just said no school today. And I could wake up and be like, yes, I don't have school today. <laughs> like I'm an, I'm an adult. I don't have school anymore. Like, wow. That's yeah. Like I remember go, getting picked up from my mom in like eighth grade. And I'm like, I hate school so much. She's like, well, I did it. You got to do it too. And I'm like, God, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I think that's a, you highlight a very important point, though, that just because uh, a kid, a child, you know, there are a lot of parents that listen to this, and mm -hmm. just because uh, a kid is not maybe excelling in school in a particular way, never have there been more opportunities for self-selection yeah. in the creative process now. If you can put something out, there's more opportunity for kids like me, yeah. for you, to make a difference, to put themselves out there, do something different. I think it's also important to note, I think you should go to school at least through high school. Mm -hmm. um, that you should, like that shouldn't even be a question. Like you should just- Co-sign, co co-sign. Yeah, like yeah. like I, I knew I hated school, but I was like, I have to get through high school. You can't, what well, do you can't drop out of high school? Like that's not cool. Mm -hmm. Like just get through high school, then decide. But that's, I feel like that goes without saying. Like you got, like that's just what life is. Like you have to go from kindergarten to high school. You have to go through that suffering. Like you have to go through that period because that, helps you grow as a person. It's like not just school, like that whole experience of high school, whole experience of middle school. It's like, a, it's a thing. It's part of life that you got to go through that. Yeah, it's part of personal development, social development, mm -hmm. how you're uh, learning who you are. Totally. Yeah. I, I agree. Yeah, I agree. So where can people find everything that you're doing? Where can people find your stuff? Um, the only two things I use are YouTube and Instagram. I don't really use my Twitter or Facebook too much, but if you just Go to Project One Life on YouTube or Instagram. My channel will pop up. Matt, thanks so much for coming on. I'm so glad that we were able to sit down, do the podcast, and uh, best of luck with your newest videos, new Th stuff. Thank you so much. This is my first podcast, so I'm, I'm very happy. I'm going to look back on this in the future, and I'm glad this was my first one. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and just like that, we've reached the end of the episode. If you did enjoy this episode, there will be new ones coming out every week for the next several months throughout season two. So subscribe in your favorite podcast player or on YouTube at the new podcast channel, youtube.com slash BTT podcast. If you really enjoyed the podcast, please take a moment to leave a review on Apple Podcasts or your player of choice. It would mean the world to me if you did that, and it really does help get the word out about podcasts like this one. So thank you so much for your time. Hope you have a wonderful week, and we'll see you in the next one.